Oh my god, I can't believe season three of Stranger Things is finally here on Netflix. I had a great summer with my girlfriend, Susie. Susie, do you copy? Hey, Dusty Bun. I had a great summer with you at camp. Hey, baby. And even locking lips with your pearly whites. Yeah. Dusty Poo, can you sing me the never-ending story song? I guess I'll sing it. Turn around. <laughs> yeah, I can't sing, Susie, can I? I love your voice. It's so soothing. I love you too, honey bun. I'll see you soon. Time for Stranger Things Season 3 Review. What's going on, friends? Logan Myers here for Cinefellows.com. Really excited to talk about uh, the next show that just aired on the 4th of July, and happy belated 4th to all of you. Stranger Things Season 3 finally hit the streaming service. I've been waiting for this for like, what, two years, ever since the last season came out. And uh, we ended up binge watching it in a day and a half. Eight episodes, we watched six episodes on 4th of July, so we absolutely fell in love with this story. Really excited to talk about it, so let's get to it, shall we? So the last season we saw, you know, Eleven closing up the portal to the Upside Down, and this time around season three, we see the kids, it's 4th of July, it's summer, it's hot, uh, it's a lot of pastel colors and bright colors where the other seasons were kind of darker in the fall and Halloween time. They went about this season in a whole different stylistic approach. I meant the atmosphere, the whole vibe of the season. It's completely different. It takes place in the summer. They have the hormones now, they're older and taller and their voices are getting deeper and they're falling for girls now. And they have a few relationships in this show. And you see where the kids are at, struggling with, you know, growing up. First episode is called Susie Duke Copy. Uh, we see Dustin returning from Camp Nowhere. He was gone for like a month or two. He shows up at home, he, you know, he hasn't talked to his friends, hasn't seen them, and they kind of surprise him at his house. It's really cool. Uh, all these like robots come to life and they like surprise him. And you see Lucas and you see Will and Mike. It's weird seeing them with deeper voices. They're a lot taller now. They're definitely growing up. They're teenagers. They're not little babies anymore, as we saw from the first season. They do a lot of flashbacks in season three of the first season. You can see how much they've grown up since then. And this time around, we have Eleven with long hair at this point. Millie Bobby Brown is fantastic this season. And you have Mike played by Finn Wolfhard, which another great young actor. It's gonna be the It Chapter Two coming out this summer. And they have a relationship, you know, Hopper's the stepdad and you see Mike and Eleven making out and Hopper's like kind of keeping an eye on them, making sure they're not kissing. And he's really angry this season. He's a lot, got a lot of built up frustration and he's not very happy and you just see it get worse and worse throughout the season. Uh, but it's cool seeing Hopper as a dad uh, this season, full blown dad, like getting angry, you know, talking to Mike and telling him he can't do this and that, or he won't see his daughter Eleven. So he's really hard on Mike and doesn't trust him and he's up to no good with his daughter. And he kind of wants to keep Eleven youthful forever and d doesn't want her to grow up. So there's a lot of great characters set up early on in this episode. We see Lucas and Mad, Mad Max uh, kind of have a relationship. And you see Dustin talking about his girlfriend he met at camp that lives in Utah and sets up this radio. Uh, which is really fantastic. In the first episode, him like setting this up and trying to talk to her on the CB radio and her not responding. And other characters, we have Steve, Uncle Steve. Daddy Steve is back. He's working at uh, Scoops Ahoy, which is like a Baskin Robbins ice cream uh, restaurant in this mall called Starcourt Mall, which is another huge aspect of this season. He works with his friend Robin. She's played by Maya Hawk, which is Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke's daughter, which I didn't find out about until after watching this season. I'm um, like, she looks really familiar, and I looked it up, and I'm like, wow, she looks exactly like her parents. Uh, but she was really fantastic in this season, and she brought in a lot of comedy and always kind of busting Steve's balls about how he's not a chick magnet at all, and he's always like uh, striking out when he's trying to talk to girls at Scoops Ahoy and like hitting on him and stuff. And He's out of high school, he didn't go to college, he just has a job at this point. This season we have Jonathan and Nancy back, they're still dating, they work at the local um, newspaper, Jonathan's a photographer, and Nancy is kind of the assistant or works in the office, basically goes to get lunch for all these assholes, you know, that work at the newspaper, old like middle-aged men that are like really sexist. They end up finding out about this story, of course they want to crack it. It has to do with these rats and all this fertilizer that's being eaten by rats and trying to figure out what's going on with that so they go interview some people and it really sets up a lot of uh, the rest of the story in this season. First episode they kind of introduce some Russians, we're not really sure what that's all about. 
but throughout the season we figure out what that has to do with uh, evil Russians and which was a big thing in the 80s a lot of great movies it was really cool how they incorporated that into the season and I felt like there was a huge like Red Dawn vibe to the season so the setup of like a Russian assassin all these Russians working underneath the mall and my favorite bromance Dustin and Steve this season Dustin returns from camp shows up to see Steve and they're like hitting it off catching up and uh, their story is really cool this season how they decode this message from the Russians and it has to do with them working underneath the mall and what goes on down there so it's really fantastic with this season like i was saying it takes place in the summer you know we get to see fourth of july fireworks things like that we get to see billy billy was the big douchebag from last season that showed up and he was just no good he was driving his fast car just a badass smoking cigarettes but this season it felt like he had more to do and a lot of the story the bigger elements of the season have to do with his character he's a lifeguard at the local pool in hawkins uh, the character's played by Dacre Montgomery. Oh God, he's such a dreamboat. He's so equipped. Ooh, Billy. And something bad really happens to him in his car in the local factory that has to do with these rats and this creature. And it really sets up his character and what happens to him throughout uh, the remaining episodes. But I have to say the production and set design of this season is absolutely beautiful. The capturing the pastel and vibrant colors of the Starcourt Mall, this big 4th of July festivities they have, like a carnival and just a big parade and uh, big shindig there in Hawkins was really captured beautifully and I thought it created a really great atmosphere for the season uh, with how these characters are changing and growing up. Um, trying to enjoy the summer, falling in love, and things they come across, all the evil entities they come across, the Mind Flayer, his minions, you know, creatures from the Upside Down, and now introducing the evil Russians in two separate kind of stories. And we have old Winona Ryder returning this season as Joyce Byers. If you guys remember, her boyfriend was eaten alive by Demi Gorgons last season, the Demi Dogs. Uh, played by Sean Astin, so she's still recuperating from that, that traumatizing experience of her boyfriend getting murdered in front of her eyes, so she's going through a lot of mental shit again. Um, also, you know, with her kids, you know, Jonathan growing up, having a job, and then young Will that's still having a lot of complications and still having the feelings and goosebumps in the back of his neck of the upside down, the mind flare. So she's always worried and uh, you know, Hopper comes in the, the story again, angry this season, but they had this sort of chemistry. He's madly in love with Joyce. Joyce is not in the right mental place to be in a relationship with Hopper, uh, but you can tell she has feelings for him. So it sets up a lot of their um, relationship this season, them investigating. Certain things are happening in this town and introducing a few other Russians, a good Russian name, Alexei. They set up with like a Russian assassin guy, kind of looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger meets Dolph Lundgren. Just really menacing big dude. They get into it a few times. Really great fight sequences. Uh, one having to do in a fun house, which was really cool at this carnival. And he's trying to protect the town of Hawkins and the kids that live there, you know, being the sheriff of Hawkins, Indiana. So this season, my favorite episodes. There's only eight episodes. They're about an hour apiece. The first episode, the third episode, having to do with the lifeguard, which was fucking awesome. Straight up horror from the 80s. And episode seven and eight. Uh, I loved episode 8, which was called The Battle of Starcourt, The Battle of the Mall. The production value and the set design of the season has definitely gone up. They have a bigger budget, and they spent all that money very well because the setup of episode 8 is absolutely fucking terrifying and beautifully shot. And the show never really slows down in the 8 episodes. Uh, the first two were kind of building up the story, and it never kept me uninterested. I was really involved in the entire eight episodes, and it was very fast-paced, a lot of action, a lot of shit going on with these different groups of people, all the characters in the show, all leading up where they all kind of meet up in the final episode, the Battle of Star Court. Terry Elways plays like the scumbag mayor that, you know, works with the Russians, and we have uh, Jake Busey that works at the local newspaper that's always kind of like sexually harassing Nancy. And a lot of great characters, a lot of great new characters they brought into this season. And I really love the storytelling this time around. The Duffer Brothers, in my opinion, can do no wrong. I think those guys can really come up with some great original ideas. And they're just fantastic storytellers and uh, visionaries. And this season is a lot different than the, the first two. And I absolutely love that. You know, the tagline, one summer can change everything. It basically does uh, in many ways, you know, with the Mind Flayer. Uh, not being an upside down, returning to wreak havoc and kill, introducing all the Russian characters, the evil characters of this season. I, I thought it was just really well done and it kept me interested from start to finish. Again, I, we binge watched the show in a day and a half. I couldn't stop watching it. 
and I'm currently going through withdrawals. And that's how much I love it. And hopefully you guys loved it as much as I did. So overall, I was really excited for the season three of Stranger Things. I've been patiently waiting this, not really patiently, been waiting for this for a long time. And I was definitely pleased. I was not disappointed in any way, shape or form. But what happens to these kids and what they encounter, how everything turns out for the emotional ending of season three. And it definitely is one of my favorite seasons thus far. So overall, I'm going to give Stranger Things season three a four and a half out of five mind flare hair pieces. So what did you guys think of season three of Stranger Things? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit subscribe. This is Logan Meyer signing out from the Starcourt Mall. I'm here at Scoops Ahoy with Steven Robin. Until the next video review. Cheese!